Well, those are from those long-range tear gas missiles that they were firing. It may not look like it, but this house in Innis. So they started firing them into the attic. Too. Once was torn up. That didn't get repaired. And its owner's Mike. It looked like something from Syria after it was done. And Jack himself. And this has really put us in a hole this yeah. last year. Are not to blame. It was like a five to six hour standoff. What caused all this damage? law enforcement. If you walked inside this house afterwards, it would it would look like like a war zone. Mike and Jackie rented this house out last February. A guest stopped by for a visit. One problem, though, that guest was wanted by the U.S. Marshals. And when Marshals found out he was inside, that's where they shot through. They shoot right through these windows. Law enforcement showed up and shot 14 rounds of tear gas into the home, breaking almost every window. And when the fugitive wouldn't come out of the attic, we had to replace a whole piece of sheetrock in here because he fell through in here. Well, officers, every one of these doors were kicked in. They broke down doors and made an arrest. Police reports show this is called a no knock raid. It's when law enforcement enters a home without prior notice, often forcefully because they fear a suspect may be dangerous or believe evidence may be destroyed. The number of no knock raids has increased from 3,000 in 1981 to an estimated 50,000 annually, according to an Eastern Kentucky University study. But who is going to fix this house? The cost to repair this house is about $25,000. And you'd think you break it, you fix it. Police often claim governmental immunity. That's despite damaging the property of innocent owners. It's based on the old English legal concept, sovereign immunity, meaning the king cannot be sued. Federal and state agencies have made governmental immunity claims to shield police departments and other agencies from huge financial losses and to also ensure they're not hamstrung while protecting the public. WFAA is learning that the selfs are among a growing number of property owners because that's new who have struggled to be reimbursed after police damaged their property and property insurance may offer little help. The insurance company said it was an act of the government that they would not pay for it. And most insurance companies don't cover it. And if they do, you may only see a sliver of cash. That's what happened with the selfs. Instead of full coverage for the 25 grand in damage they got. We got about an $8,000 check. Now you can file a claim for damages, but in cases that WFAA uncovered, property owners failed to be made whole. They even broke down the closet door. The selfs file with the feds more than a year ago and are still waiting to hear back. Financially, we are too far behind in having to repair this house for me to be able to retire the way I wanted to. One last ditch option, lawyer up. It was denied in the federal court system all the way to the United States Supreme Court. But Craig Patty's story makes you want to think twice. It took seven and a half years to to get 30 cents on the dollar of my own money. Patty used to own a trucking company, but in 2011, he unknowingly hired a DEA informant as a driver. And without asking Patty's permission, the DEA instructed that driver to pick up a drug load in the Rio Grande Valley and take it to cartel members so arrests could later be made, according to federal court records. But the cartel was a few steps ahead. The cartel had plans of their own. They were going to steal the load. Members stormed the truck in Houston, shot Patty's driver, and got in a shootout with police. It was just mayhem. Patty's truck was wrecked. I saw bullet holes, damages on the right side, damages on the fuel tank, body matter. Yes, he was shot eight times. The DEA declined to repair his truck and for months even refused to return it according to Patty's federal lawsuit. Without the truck, his business was handicapped. He lost close to a quarter million, and that includes business interruption. Patty sued for nearly three million in damages and business losses. Patty sought compensation from the DEA for the damage to his truck and company, but a federal court ruled that the government wasn't liable. The court found sovereign immunity bars Patty's constitutional claims. As a last resort, Patty turned to the U.S. Court of Federal Claims. Ultimately, Patty says he received only 75 grand, a fraction of his losses and legal expenses. You can only sue the king as much as he'll allow you to sue him. But get this, the courts have actually ruled in the past to restrict such wide immunity. If you're taking their property and you're not paying them for it, you're not doing a very good job as a government. Attorney Michael Lampson won a landmark case in 1980 when a family's Houston home was allowed to burn. They decided to shoot in expired tear gas canisters, which are nothing more than incendiary devices. But Lampson says federal and state judges in recent years often have sided with police.
This cannot go on in this country. Leo Black. What happened to us is a third world by, by, any, by any stretch of the imagination. Says Greenwood Village police severely damaged his home. All this because a shoplifter fleeing Walmart barricaded himself inside, then fired a shot at police. A federal appeals court sided with the city finding that police were just trying to enforce the law. Leck was not entitled to damages. The court did say that such a ruling may seem unfair, but it concluded that police can't always be burdened with the condition of paying damages. You find it unbelievable that something like this can legally occur in the United States. Leck has filed a brief with the U.S. Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has to hear a case like this. That was blown out. Back in Innis, the selfs await their shot at being made whole. They haven't sued and don't even know if it's worth it right now. I'm almost like believing I'm not gonna see anything out of this. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get screwed, that's just the way it is. And that, the selfs say, is hard to accept. In Ellis County, I'm Matt Howerton.